Hello. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to make slides that work nicely as the visual component of blended learning videos. If you're not using slides in your teaching, this might not be for you. The good news is that it's probably quite easy to modify any existing slides you've already created for live lectures. It largely boils down to deleting a bunch of stuff, adding some annotations, and just thinking slightly differently about the role that visuals play in the delivery of your teaching. Unlike the technologies that went before them, like Magic Lanterns or 35mm or overhead projectors, digital slides you make in PowerPoint or Keynote aren't bound by the physical constraints of their analogue predecessors. And although the default settings in these tools might encourage you to mimic the experience of clicking through physical slides, with a few tweaks you can use them to make visual content that's far more suitable for video. So let's have a look at a traditional PowerPoint style slide. This one's fairly clean, fairly nicely laid out, not too overcrowded, nice logo, but it's very much mirroring a physical slide and it's designed for a moment in time where we tried to make slides that could be used both for live presentations and for handouts. It's got a slide number, it's got a title, it's got my contact details on it, but the reality is you just don't need most of this stuff on the screen all the time and most of these bits of decoration unhelpfully reinforce the idea that this is a discrete slide and not just part of a narrative. So you don't need the logo, that was there on the title screen anyway. You don't need a title, it should be clear what I'm talking about from what I'm talking about. You don't need a slide number or contact details or copyright notice, they can all go. If there's one bit to really get rid of though, it's this, it's the main text. And that just leaves you with a picture. And of course that would make this slide into a terrible handout, but nobody's gonna print your video out anyway the truth is that if a slide has enough context for it to be used as a good handout, it's probably a bad slide for live lectures or videos. The problem with having words on a slide at all is that people are going to try and read them. And if you're talking at the same time, you're inevitably asking your audience to read those words whilst listening to what you're saying. And that's just really hard to do. The best you can hope for is that they ignore either what you're saying or what you've written, and that just seems weird. There are three other things that could happen, but all of them are worse than this. For this next bit, try and read the words and listen along to what I'm saying at the same time, and you'll probably see what I mean. The first is that you're saying exactly the same words that are on the slide. And here you're asking your audience to listen and read, and then come to the conclusion that they only needed to do one or the other. And that's just wasted cognitive effort that they could have better spent understanding your message. The second is that the words on the slide have the same meaning but are written slightly differently to the ones you're saying. Now you're asking your audience to spot that these two streams of information are effectively the same if not identical, and that's a bad thing as well. The third possibility is that the words on the slide and the words you're saying are describing different things, and now you're asking them to process two lots of information simultaneously, which obviously is a bad idea. It'd be far better if they could just focus on what you're trying to explain and not have to worry about these kinds of unnecessary mental gymnastics. So just don't put words on slides. There are obviously a few caveats here. Sometimes you might be talking about a quote, in which case, fine, go ahead, put that quote on the screen. And maybe highlight the bits you're talking about as you discuss it. Definitions are similar, they're probably okay too. Labels on diagrams, fine, and we'll look at these in a bit more in a moment. And short lists are probably fine too, especially if they're part of the sort of the take home message, but really do keep them short. As a general guideline, if you find yourself feeling slightly naughty whenever you put a word on a slide, that's probably not a bad thing. It doesn't mean you can't ever do it, but just don't use it as your go to solution for having something on the screen. When it comes to diagrams and pictures, it's worth thinking a little bit differently too. This plate from a book from the 1720s has got three separate figures combined on one page, and this was just to simplify the printing process at the time. Of course, we don't have that constraint with digital slides, so don't put several diagrams on the screen at the same time unless you're comparing bits of them. Just focus on whatever is relevant and use up the whole screen. Here, for example, there are labels that refer to a key that presumably would have been somewhere else in the book. On a digital slide, it's much better just to highlight the bits you're talking about at the time. I could, for example, go for a fairly traditional labelling with arrows like this, but maybe it would be better just to zoom in on the bit that I care about and highlight it with an annotation. If you realise when you're recording that you've missed out highlighting something, 
you can always use the mouse pointer to highlight it. But it's also easy enough to fix it in the edit and just add an annotation there. It's important to use annotations and animations judiciously. Use them to help tell your story. Don't just put them in for sort of fun and interest. Although anybody watching your video is free to rewind or rewatch bits at any point, it's best not to rely on that or to ask them to do it. So if you find yourself referring back to something earlier in the video, just put that slide back on the screen. Don't expect them to go back and hunt for it themselves. It's actually pretty easy to do this in the edit too. So if you find yourself digressing or you've not planned for something, you can just fix that in the edit afterwards as well. Asking them to pause the video and do some calculation or something like that and resume when they're ready, that, that's fine. If you've got diagrams or equations on a slide, you're probably going to be talking about them rather than just reading them out. So they behave more like diagrams than they do words. So the same principles kind of apply. Don't have too much on the screen at once and use the mouse pointer or annotations to highlight and focus on the bits that you're discussing. Finally, a quick word on fonts. You probably know there are two main groups of fonts. There's Roman or serif fonts like Palatino. And then there's the Gothic or sans serif fonts like Helvetica. Serif fonts have these little wiggly flourishes and sans serif fonts just don't have them. You may have heard conflicting views about which are better for different uses, but on modern high resolution screens and printers, it really doesn't make much difference. Recent studies of the legibility, that, that's how easy it is to recognize individual characters, and the readability, which is how easy it is to recognize chunks of text or read chunks of text, suggest that they're pretty much the same whichever you use. So just don't pick anything too weird and you'll be fine. In any case, if you're not putting many words on the slide, it's really not going to be an issue.